right now and to just confirm that we have all of my fellow commissioners. Oh, there we are. I see everyone now. So what we'll do is just um, confirm our attendance. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, good afternoon, I am present. Commissioner O'Brien. I am here. Thank you, Commissioner Zinnica. Here, good afternoon, everybody. Commissioner Stebbins. I'm here, good afternoon. Great, thank you. So, and um, for the record, this uh, hearing will be recorded. It will be conducted, as you can see, virtually. Uh, we are um, subject to the open meeting law and Governor Baker issued an executive order that gave us some relief during the pandemic to conduct our public meetings and hearings um, through virtual technology like this uh, technology that we've actually been using since March 14th. So we appreciate um, that relief that was given. Um, as I mentioned, it will be recorded. Um, I um, want to um, point out that it is today is September 16th and we're starting around 3.03. We plan on this uh, public hearing going to at least six o'clock and uh, we look forward to the discussion ahead. But first on behalf of my fellow commissioners, I wanna thank you all for joining us in, as I said, this virtual public hearing. This uh, session is intended to provide <clears throat> the Gaming Commission with the opportunity to obtain public input regarding the renewal of a Category 2 gaming license currently held by Plainville Gaming and Redevelopment LLC, currently doing business as Plain Ridge Park Casino. PPC's license is subject to renewal after five years of operations. The session will be mostly a listening session for me and my fellow commissioners. No votes, no decisions will be made at this hearing. It's simply a chance for my fellow commissioners and I to gather information, engage public sentiment uh, relative to the renewal application. Commission will be permitted to ask questions of the applicant before we hear presentations and comments from state and local elected and appointed officials, other stakeholders and members of the general public. Uh, <clears throat> I should add that if we had been able to convene as a group, we would have likely conducted this hearing in Plainville State of the Art Public Safety and Town Hall Complex funded in part through casino generated gaming revenues generated by PPC. And while the accommodations are very different in light of our adherence to the important COVID-19 guidelines, we are, and I'm speaking for all my fellow commissioners, and I know they would not object, very grateful to have such extensive virtual participation today. We thank each and every one of you who are attending and contributing to this public session. And to get started now, I'll turn to uh, Joe Delaney, who has served as our construction project manager and is now currently overseeing community affairs on behalf of the MGC. And of course, his um, assistant uh, and um, project manager, right hand, Mary Thurlow. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, commissioners. Um, glad to be here today. Um, just before we get into the meat of the meeting, I'd, I'd like to just spend a couple of minutes to give you a little bit of a chronology of how we got to where we are today. Um, so back in February, on February 5th, uh, Plain Ridge Park Casino requested a renewal of its Category 2 gaming license for an additional five years. Um, and then on February 13th, the Gaming Commission adopted some renewal procedures for a Category 2 gaming license. Uh, we issued a letter uh, to Plain Ridge Park Casino on February 28th, where we outlined what those renewal procedures were and also established a timeline for that process. Now, of course, on March 15th, uh, 2020, uh, the casinos in Massachusetts were closed uh, due to COVID-19. Um, and due to staff furloughs at Plain Ridge Park and uh, just due to the 
sort of uncertain nature of everything that was going on, it was determined that keeping to that original license renewal schedule wouldn't be possible. Uh, so Plainridge Park uh, Casino, in conjunction with Gaming Commission staff, we established a revised schedule for submission of the application materials. So by early June, uh, Plainridge Park had submitted all of the required information for us to start moving forward in the review process. Now at that point, the commission was uh, deep in discussions on the proper protocols for reopening the casinos and wanted to defer the discussions regarding the Plainridge Park relicensing until after the casinos had opened. So under Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 13, it, it stipulates that a license will not expire if the applicant has made timely and sufficient application for renewal, but the awarding authority has not acted on that application. So on June 18th, uh, the commission voted to determine that the application was timely and sufficient, which would then allow an orderly process to reopen the casinos and then consider Plainbridge Park's uh, relicensing. So at a subsequent agenda setting meeting, the commission agreed on a schedule whereby the suitability portion of the application would be considered in July and the public hearing and then subsequent public meeting to vote on the license renewal would take place after Labor Day. Um, and on July 8th, 2020, the Plainridge Park Casino reopened to the public. On June 3rd, uh, July, excuse me, July 30th, 2020, the Gaming Commission held a public meeting to consider the suitability of individual qualifiers and entities, uh, which were approved by the commission. Um, on September 2nd, we issued the public notice for this meeting, which brings us to today. And as uh, the chair mentioned, the primary purpose of this meeting is to receive a presentation by Plainridge Park Casino and to hear uh, from the public. Uh, the commission will not deliberate on the matter or make any decisions today. Uh, the commission will reconvene on September 30th, 2020 to deliberate on the application and render a decision on the renewal of the license. So at this point, unless there are any questions of me, um, I'll turn it over to Lance George, Vice President and General Manager of Plainridge Park Casino to introduce his, his team and to make a presentation. Thanks, Joe. Um, I think, uh... Uh, in order of logistics, I think we're trying to figure out, or if we can share our screen for the presentation. Believe this is Dana. I just shared a presentation. Can you let me know if you're able to see it? Yes, we're seeing it. Okay. Do Do you want to make it full screen? This. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. Thank you. Are, are we, uh, Lance, we are able to see the screen. Are you able to hear us okay? I can, I can. Give me okay. one second, just get myself over. Okay, okay. Good. okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Joe. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's certainly great to be here on, uh, on what is an exciting day for us. As we get started, I did want to take a moment to talk through our approach today. You will hear from several property representatives who will be introduced throughout the presentation. Also joining us today from our corporate office is Aaron Chamberlain, a Senior Vice President of Regional Operations for Penn National. Each individual will talk briefly, initially providing some highlights related to their specific areas of responsibility over the first five years of operation, and then we'll transition into a broader comments, comment period regarding the next five years, what is potentially on the horizon for the industry and our property. And so, with those opening comments out of the way, let's jump right into the slides. There it is, uh, opening day just over five years ago, uh, I guess five years and three months at this point, an amazing how time flies. Uh, several familiar faces uh, that you'll recognize in this photo, Commissioners Hammond, Zuniga, and Stebbins to the far right. This would have been at approximately 10.30, I believe, uh, we opened our doors just a few hours later, sometime between noon and one, greeted by a lengthy line on what was a very warm day, if I remember correctly. 
significant change over the course of our first five years of operation. The timeline combines some of the more meaningful capital improvements we've made to the property, as well as an indication of when the three additional casinos opened in the area. Of course, we've got the two in Massachusetts and then the third just over the border in Tiverton, Rhode Island. I won't go through the entire timeline in detail, however, at a high level, some of the more notable changes. Uh, somehow, uh, shame on us, the property failed to open with a Dunkin' Donuts. That issue was remedied in December of 2016. Also, when the property opened, the high limit area was sort of an afterthought. This was corrected with a much improved gaming area and lounge in July of 2018. In February of 19, we opened the Smashburger, which has turned out to be an operational fit and certainly well received by our customers. And then there are several dates highlighted related to racing. A couple of uh, the more significant capital improvements in the form of a video display board, paddock renovation, a fencing project, as well as a remodel of the outdoor racing apron area. And so on the heels of those comments regarding racing, I think it's an appropriate time to turn it over to Steve O'Toole, our director of racing, who will provide his thoughts on a few racing highlights over the first term of our license, and then a quick peek into the next term. Thanks, Lance. Um, I'm actually uh, joining the meeting under Jason Giddle. Uh, I know we look alike and you can't tell the difference between the two of us, but my, my video wasn't working. So uh, just wanna make sure you can see me and hear me under Jason's uh, uh, screen. Uh, thanks Lance for uh, turning it over to me. I'm actually, as Lance stated, we're, we're looking back five years, but I'm actually going to look back uh, six years or so. Um, the racing industry in, in Massachusetts was in jeopardy of uh, survival, and my slides are going to show the benefit of uh, uh, the of, of the uh, gaming license acquired by Penn National to the uh, racing industry. Uh, however, at the same time, we had over 100 uh, employees, and also the, the Plainville community would have uh, suffered greatly the consequences of an intimate closure. Uh, without uh, gaining that award of the, of the license. So uh, what happened back then, and, and Plainridge was actually the largest taxpayer in the town of Plainville for over a dozen years. And uh, what happened back then was that Penn, Plain, uh, Penn National stepped in and they were awarded the, uh, applied for and were awarded the racing license uh, for 2014, which contained 80 days. Uh, that gave our employees and our horsemen some stability for uh, uh, the 2014 year as we were going into the uh, license award, that was the license award year. Um, Penn National actually guaranteed a purse account in 2014 of $2.5 million to the horseman um, in, in the application for that 80, 80 days. The purse account in 2013 was $1.85 million. So that was a guarantee that that Penn National had made in that initial year of, opera of operating the, the racetrack. <clears throat> After the award of the class two gaming license and the casino opening, many of our employees transitioned nicely uh, into the uh, casino uh, atmosphere. Our, our housekeeping people went to EVS, we had people go to facilities, oh. uh, security and, and food and beverage. Um, the other things too, a lot of, a lot of the uh, folks were, got some new roles in finance, slots, and, and even valet. My racing team, which I was very happy stayed intact, we added a few members, uh, some managers, and uh, some new officials, uh, and of course, uh, some mutual clerk, clerks along, along the way, but the core racing folks are uh, still with us. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, look, look at the, the, the slide that's on the screen now, and just explain a few things about that. Um, Penn National, one of the 11 original applicants, did not have a racing license under uh, Mass General nope. 128A and 128C. Uh, however, the statutory requirements under the Gaming Act were, were carried yeah. out, as you can see in uh, years 2016, 2017, uh, 2015, 16, and 17, where the gradual uh, ramping up of racing days occurred. Um, that was statutorily required, nope. and then through the commission, in the horsemen, we uh, realized that that was a little bit too many days uh, to race, and we settled on uh, right around 110 days. You can see the growth of the purses in uh, going from the guaranteed 2.5 million in 2014 all the way to almost $10 million last year. 
uh, which is which is great for the people that participate here and, and work hard in the racing industry. <clears throat> Most importantly, I think that's happened in the past six years has been the impacts seen by the breeding uh, program in Massachusetts. If uh, if racing had gone down in 213, 214, uh, these people that have uh, have long-term investments in the industry, uh, where they set up their uh, breeding and don't realize anything for a few years, would have absolutely nowhere to go in 14 and 15 and 16 with their yearlings, their two-year-olds, their three-year-olds. But as you can see in the in the breeding purses, that ramped up well. And one of the nice things that's happened is we've had a, a couple new farms. Uh, spring up in the area. The existing farms are staying in business, and, they're, and the existing farms are actually ex expanding to some extent. Uh, our, our handle has also grown and, and has stabilized nicely. We introduced the Spirit of Massachusetts Trot and the Clara Barton Pace over the course of the first five years. Uh, our track has been in, in great shape, and uh, this year, which is actually looking ahead, I guess, but uh, this year we set a world record uh, in in the uh, spirit of Massachusetts trot. That next slide. Um, next month, I will be applying on the annual on the annual basis for our racing license application for 2021. It will include 110 days of racing. Um, that is part of a seven year agreement that we have with our horsemen uh, to race 110 days each year. Uh, that that will also guarantee the spirit of Massachusetts trot for those seven years, as well as the Clara Barton pace. Uh, one of the things that uh, that we have done in the past few years, and now going forward, we'll be able to do even more with the uh, the, the breeding program tripling in size. We'll be able to showcase more sire stake races and restricted events for those Massachusetts owned and Massachusetts bred horses, which is really a great thing. <clears throat> the um, the uh, the handle is to continue to grow the handle. We have we have leaned on the USDA strategic wager initiatives, where they match certain uh, incentives that we uh, put out there to the to our racing customers here in Massachusetts as well as across the country, with guaranteed pools of certain sizes on certain races and certain uh, uh, exotic wagers, as well as jackpot wagers, which have really caught on. Uh, we have the Wicked High Five that we've been doing. We, we will continue to do that. We have had jackpots of $48,000 and $37,000. The $37,000 jackpot was hit right here in the building at Plain Ridge. And that's for a 20 cent wager. So it's a pretty good jackpot uh, when you compare it to a, a 20 cent wager. This year, we've instituted a pick six. We have picks uh, in, the, in the previous uh, wager that I mentioned that's all within one race the pick six is six races and uh, that's for 10 cents that's been hit several times this times this year that we've uh, this is the first year that we've offered that uh, for two and three thousand dollars right now it currently stands at just a little bit more than five thousand dollars so the next time that that gets hit that'll be the highest that we've uh, that we've paid out on that um, as far as the customers and our customer relations uh, we've we have uh, rewards cards to earn racing rewards through my choice, similar to uh, what slot players get here at the property. And we also have uh, done some handicapping contests and we want to continue those contests because the commission knows we had a pretty aggressive schedule of about a dozen handicapping contests that, were, that was approved by the commission, but we weren't able to uh, bring those to fruition this year uh, due to the interruption, but we plan on, on doing that in the future. Uh, I'd like to turn it over now to our head of finance. Uh, she helps keep uh, racing on course financially and also handles the track in the purse account. Uh, they, she, the, her department tracks it, pays out thousands of purse checks to our racing participants every year. And we're really grateful for all their help. Uh, our CFO, Dana Fortin. Can't hear you. Dana, if you could just start again. We couldn't quite hear you. That'd be great. My apologies. Is everything clear now? Much better. Thank you. Perfect. So thank you, Steve, for the introduction. A quick look at the past five years of financial performance. Since 2015, we have generated over 303 million in tax revenue for the state and over 68 million in tax revenue for the Racehorse Development Fund. 
Another great success story for Plainridge is our partnership with the lottery. We've sold over 15 million in lottery tickets since opening in 2015. In terms of reinvestment in our facility, we've spent over 7 million in capital expenditures. This includes the purchase of new slot machines, IT hardware and software, improvements to the barns and paddocks and racing, as well as updates to our various F&B outlets. We've met the goals for 2015 through 2019 as set out in our capital expenditure plan. On the bottom half of the slide, you'll see a chart that shows our diverse spend. Penn has made a commitment to diverse spend with a part of our diversity committee being dedicated to our procurement from NEBs, BBs, and BBs. The commitment has given us the opportunity to build great partnerships with vendors in the Commonwealth and are reflected in these figures. From opening through the first quarter of 2020, we had a total of 29% of qualified spend go to diverse vendors on a goal of 21%. In each individual category, we also met or exceeded these goals. And with that, I'll turn it over to our VP of HR, Kathy Lucas, to take a look at employment. Thank you, Dana. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. During the past five years, we focused on diversity, veterans, women, and local talent recruitment. We have achieved this through hosting and attending numerous job fairs, offering recruitment bonuses, incentive programs, and leveraging partnerships with colleges, veteran, and diversity organizations. As you can see in the chart, we have exceeded all employment goals with the exception of local hires. Of our team members hired, 66% of our team members hired are from Massachusetts, despite our proximity to Rhode Island. To retain our talent, we have two development programs that help our team members exceed. The first is LEAP, the Leadership Excellence at Penn program. It's designed for team members interested in building a career in the gaming industry. They gain an understanding of the whole casino operation, manage projects, attain management skills, and they can make a real contribution to our business. We had five team members participate and get promoted in this program since 2018. Our second development program is WLP. Women Leading in Penn offers visible female executive and leadership role models. They champion growth and development for women at the property. They create organic mentorships to increase the number of women in leadership specifically at the manager level on an annual basis. We have partnered with the Women's Expo, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Women's Link to bring together to provide opportunities for women to connect, support, and learn from each other's professional growth. Since 2018, we had 30 team members participate, and of those, 11 team members got promoted from the program. Next slide, please. As we look forward, the areas of opportunity with PPC are ideal. We want our team members to work happy. We'll continue to focus on recruitment through diversity, veterans, women, and local talent opportunities, along with enhancing the LEAP program and the WLP program that currently exist. We have two exciting initiatives to share. First, Penn National Gaming announced a commitment of at least $1 million annually to support diversity initiatives. At PPC, we'll focus on financing a scholarship fund that helps our underrepresented team members and their children pursue higher education, as well as sponsoring students who need assistance to attend HBCU campus tours, increasing our recruitment efforts and supporting historically black colleges and universities. Family care for our team members is the second initiative. Supporting employee care needs increases productivity, decreases absenteeism, and helps working parents. We sought to find the right way to assist our team members, and care.com care offers programs most desired, including child care at home or in daycare centers. The care.com membership grants unlimited access to a network of caregivers to find ongoing care for children, adults, seniors, pets, and more. Care at work eases employee stress and reduces missed work days by providing high quality backup care for children and adults during emergencies. Providing the care.com membership and subsidizing the cost of emergency backup care with care at work allows our team members 
access to reliable solutions for their family care. Thank you, and now I'm going to turn it over to Mike Mueller, our Vice President of Operations. Thanks, Kathy. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Uh, moving ahead to the gaming look back slide. In the five years since we've been open, we've had a gross win per unit of $418 per day. This is very strong as it compares to the national average of $217 per day. As a part of our property capital spend, we've purchased 180 new slot machines to keep our floor fresh for our patrons. In addition, as Lance mentioned in the introduction, in 2018, we listened to our high limit players and built a brand new high limit room and lounge to cater to our top tier guests. Next slide. As we look towards the future of gaming, there are some interesting things happening in the industry. First is the emergence of numerous gaming apps like the My Choice Casino app that offers the consumers alternative ways to place their casino and sports betting wagers. Next is some promising technology that's currently in the developmental stages that will allow casino patrons to place sports betting wagers directly from their slot machines while they're playing. And finally, the Hard Rock Casino in Atlantic City has recently debuted live, real money casino slots that can be remotely accessed, viewed, and played in real time right from the player's home. This is interesting technology and it's brand new. Uh, you can see a picture of this gaming space at the Hard Rock on the right hand side of this slide. Up next is our Director of Information Technology, Jason Gitt. Hi, everybody, and thanks uh, for giving me this brief opportunity to speak on behalf of the technology accomplishments at PPC. Everybody tends to think of IT accomplishments in terms of bytes and bits and security. Uh, I'm happy to report to the commission that the past five years, when looking back, have been a pretty good collaborative effort uh, between the PPC technology teams and the Mass Gaming Commission uh, teams, Katrina and her folks. Uh, we've been through several larger projects, and some of our successes include uh, deploying the Mass Gaming Commission uh, system of record, or a CMS system, back in February of 2016. Why is this of note? Uh, it, it should be told that we, we did this while we were open, which is not the normal course of events. Uh, between the commission's technology team and the, and the property technology team, we were able to do it with very little interruption or disruption to our patrons. And we considered that a very big victory uh, back then. In June of 2016, uh, Plain Ridge Park launched a scientific game software suite called Pre-Commitment. Eventually, uh, this program was branded Play My Way, and it's a responsible gaming initiative. Uh, the application allows the guest to set daily, weekly, and monthly uh, gaming budgets. And I think uh, looking back on the uh, years, three years we've been running it, uh, PPC as a licensee and the commission uh, can really be happy with the interest and in the particip participation level in that program. Uh, from a compliance perspective, PPC IT has been through 12 audits, uh, both internal and external, four of, four of which were sponsored by the Gaming Commission uh, we have come through, I'm happy to report without finding, uh, through those audits. And from a per performance perspective, we've enjoyed a 99.59% uh, uptime of all of our financially significant and patron-effacing systems. We're proud of that statistic as it ranks among the highest in the Penn National property family. Uh, next slide, please. Looking forward. Uh, you know, the first three bullets are all tied together. Uh, the industry trends, and we're, we're going this way anyway, but certainly recent pandemic events uh, would point us toward increased uh, contactless, in increased cashless, and increased mobile technology. Um, essentially, the, the contactless product being the elimination of the need for a traditional player's club card. The uh, cashless being uh, the creation of a digital wallet for use across all of Plain Ridge Park's uh, uh, product families. And then uh, the mobile products, you know, Penn National Gaming wants to be able to offer its customers access to all its products outside the traditional brick and mortar uh, casino locations. We are uh, involved in opening a, a property in Morgantown, Pennsylvania 
estimated to open back half of 2021. That will be uh, the first of its kind in the Penn National family to deploy all three of those initiatives. Uh, looking forward to, to that. Um, you've all heard the term geofencing. A lot of folks tend to think of that as a limiting term and a limiting technology, something that would keep uh, restraints on use of technology and uh, the Penn National team is is pressing that in a different direction. Uh, our, our approach is uh, it's all about knowing where your customer is, what they like, what they like to do the most, and being able to offer personalized uh, offers and engage the customer in a better way. So technology trends looking forward the next five years include those are some of the highlights. Um, I think Michelle will talk a little bit of that. Michelle Collins is our next speaker. She's our Vice President of Marketing. Michelle? Thank you, Jason. Uh, as we move on to the next slide, um, we want to talk about all of our community contributions. From day one, Plain Ridge Park has been committed to supporting local charities and the community. Upon commitment, Commencement of the casino, Plain Ridge donated revenues from our opening events to several local charities. Some of these include Plain Ridge Emergency Relief Fund, Personal Best Charity, the Turkey Brigade, Lenore's Pantry, and the Veterans Fund in Mansfield. This was the only beginning, this was just the beginning of the many great relationships we would build over the next five years, resulting in supporting over 100 charities within our local community. To date, we have donated over 700,000 in cash donations. In addition, Plain Ridge has sponsored various events, banquets, comedy shows, fundraisers, and charity drives at the property, allowing both team members and our guests to participate in these great causes. Just a few of the highlights that we've done include the comedy supporting the New Hope Foundation, which creates communities free of violence and exploitation, the Dine Around supporting Lenore's Pantry, and of course, Steve O'Toole's favorite, the Polar Plunge, where team members and their families literally plunge into the cold, bitter water of Lake Pearl in early spring. As we move into 2020, we are excited about the new ways to give back. Our most recent initiative will allow guests to choose to round up their Tito ticket and select from four different charities during the transaction at the Ticket Redemption Unit. In addition, in honor of today being National Backpack Day, Plain Ridge is currently hosting a backpack drive that will support the North Attleboro school systems. On this next slide, the highlights, it, it highlights the important partnerships and relationships established through the last five years. Our continued focus has been to partner with key players that allow us to leverage our proximity to some of the largest attractions in Massachusetts and New England. Because Plain Ridge has limited amenities, it was very important to us to create an experience for our guests. We were able to accomplish this through various cross-marketing efforts with Fenway, Nesson, Patriot Place, Rentham Outlets, and TPC Boston. Whether it was a gift card giveaway, a concert package, or a VIP experience to a New England sporting event, we were able to create an unforgettable experience for all of our guests. These relationships have allowed us to expand the value of My Choice Loyalty Card, creating New England experiences not only for our local guests, but also for the My Choice database, bringing in customers from the Midwest to the West Coast. Other highlights that are important to mention in our continued support is with GameSense and their effort to ensure to continue to play responsibly. GameSense staff and knowledge was crucial during the launch of Play My Way in 2016. Their assistance in educating staff and guests on how to use this innovative budgeting tool made the transition seamless, particularly because we were the first and only casino to offer to guests. We continue to work closely with GameSense on efforts around Responsible Game Gambling Week and other initiatives showing our support. And in fact, this week happens to be uh, Responsible Gambling Education Week. So we are working together and all of the staff is walking around with a t-shirt supporting this effort. Another great partner has been the Massachusetts Lottery. Over the last several years, we ran a promotion called Winning Wednesdays. Through this cross-marketing opportunity, we were able to offer something to our guests we knew they would love and also to promote the latest and greatest scratch tickets available from the Mass Lottery. 
A few other highlights include us acquiring Pinnacle, Margaritaville, and Greektown. These acquisitions expanded our portfolio to over 40 properties across the United States. Following the acquisition, Penn Properties adopted the My Choice loyalty card, which brought new benefits to our guests and we could that we couldn't previously offer, including converting MyCash into free slot play directly at the slot machine. As we approach the next five years, Planage will continue to work with all the various sponsorships as well as identify more cross-marketing opportunities. The continued support and relationships from local chambers and tourism will be important to continue to identify synergies and develop programs to promote tourism in Massachusetts. We want to create robust programs that encourage visitation from border to border within the state, as well as gaining back any lost revenue from out of state. In January of this year, Penn announced an agreement with Barstool Sports, a leading digital sports media company. Barstool is a well-known brand with deep roots in sports betting, which will enable us to attract a new, younger demographic. Over the next few months, Properties will also be launching a My Choice app for our card holders. This is what Jason Gittle was speaking of earlier. This will allow us to target our My Choice guests so that they are receiving the offers that they prefer. We can communicate quickly and we can they can keep track of everything directly from their mobile device. In addition, we will be introducing a flipbook this month that will eventually replace the need to send direct mail pieces for those guests who prefer digital or contact-free offers. Over the next few months, we look forward to working with the town of Foxborough on the Economic Development Fund that was recently passed and to support the local towns. As we head into the next five years, our focus will continue to support the great partnerships we have built as well as identify new ones. This concludes the presentation, so now we would like to open up to any questions. If we could take down the um, <clears throat> PowerPoint, that's great, thank you. Okay. So at this point, uh, Chair, we'll open up for questions from the Commission first. And then after that is done, we will open up uh, to um, to uh, the public. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Commissioners, can I have a, if you if you have a question, good. Commissioner Zunik, I see your hand, let me get started. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, and thank you uh, to the team at Penn for, uh, for this great overview. Um, if I could go back uh, briefly to the, one of the first slides, uh, we don't have to get there, but uh, where Steve O'Toole uh, talked about the handle that, um, you know, the, the, the years, the numbers in the years, um, the handle stabilized a little bit, uh, even though the, um, the, the, the purses uh, grew a little bit more. Um, if you could speak a little bit bit more about what you see going forward for the next five years. Um, we've talked about, you've talked about how competition uh, from the other two casinos in Massachusetts um, might have a, an effect on, uh, on, on those purses by, by way of the revenues. What do you expect to see um, for the next five years for the racing? Uh, uh, thank you, Commissioner, for the question. Um, the uh, as you can see on the, on the slide, if you have the, a copy of the slide in front of you, in 2014, where we raced 80 days, our handle, our total handle was $7.6 million, and, and that grew as the days grew. Um, and now we've, and as you know, as you actually noted, we've stabilized at 110 days and around $20 million in handle each year. Uh, that's actually uh, pretty good for uh for right now and for the caliber of horses that we're racing right now. Um, I always would love to see that handle uh, a, a little bit higher. Um, I know Lance would appreciate that as well on the bottom line. But uh, as these purses grow and we have uh, more and more competitive horses coming and better quality uh, horses coming, uh, I think we have uh, the opportunity to uh, to, to really uh, showcase that, um, as well as those uh, those those gimmick wagers that we've been doing with the jackpots and everything, those have seemed to have, have paid off. We started that in in late 2017, uh, carried it through 18 and 19, 
um, those seem to have uh, really captured, uh, not just here at Plainridge, but across the country, that seems to have cap captured the imagination of a lot of the bettors. And I know it doesn't sound like it's, it's a big wager, it's 10 and, and, and 20 cent wagers, but no one bets five horses just once in one scenario. Um, they tend to spend about, you know, uh, four or five, six dollars per wager, using all different combinations and all the different ways that they that they go. So, um, we're hoping to work as I as I mentioned before. The USTA has a lot of programs out there that that really help uh, with uh, guaranteed pools and things like that. And we've been a little bit creative with the jackpots, and we continue to do that. And our and our pick six is starting to grow now. Great, thank you, um, thank you, Steve. Just one, one quick, one more quick question for uh, Miss Lucas. Um, the, in your presentation, uh, Kathy, you mentioned um, some trade diversity initiatives. Were, were those at the property level or at the company level? Great question. They're they're both. So um, for the company level, the one million dollar commitment or the at least $1 million commitment will cover uh, scholarships, also um, participation in local organizations that are looking at uh, equity and, and freedom, and then finally diversity am amongst minority businesses. At the property level here at PPC, I spoke to the scholarship support for our team members and their families, and then also a commitment to getting locals to experience the um, HBCU universities. We don't have any here in the market, so getting them there on the campus tours will allow us to support that. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, yes, I just really had a comment, um, not a question. And that is, um, you know, listening to the presentation, it, it really does remind me that uh, Penn National really has been a good partner. They have been charitable. Um, it's nice, to, they've been responsive to the, um, to their patrons, uh, talking about some of the changes they made, whether that be food uh, preferences or um, high limit, uh, Slots play, um, really um, think the uh, women um, leadership program has been effective and uh, the other mentoring program. So I just, um, they have been responsive to the needs of the commission, frankly. And um, I just wanted to comment that the presentation just reminds us of all of those things and they have been um, good for the Commonwealth, frankly. So. Thank you for that presentation and the good work over the years. Thank you. Commissioner Stebbins or Commissioner O'Brien? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll jump in just a, a, a couple of quick questions. Um, first to uh, Michelle, and I think she answered this, but if she can just clarify it for me. As she was going through the timeline, uh, you talked about about a number of sponsorships, relationships that you started. I'm thinking of you know, the Fenway Concert Series and a few others. Um, and I think you might have stated that some of those partnerships and sponsorships are ongoing. Can you give me an idea of whether that's the case? And when you talk about some of those are still ongoing, kind of a percentage wise, even of those relationships that you continue to maintain. The majority are ongoing, um, and if they're not currently ongoing, it's really just because we're waiting to find out what happens with the um, sporting events. So we're going to be doing the Fenway Concert Series again. We have a partnership with TPC Boston, which is a fairly new partnership where we can bring our players over to do golf outings. Uh, we're still with Rent Them Outlets, still with Patriot Place. So we have continued those relationships. Again, it's just that we've had to kind of tweak them a little bit given the time that we're in. Sure. Uh, the other question, Michelle, just real quick. Um, as you know, the commission through the Community Mitigation Fund paid for a kind of a tourism plan. Uh, it was applied for and used some reserve money by Foxborough, but obviously includes Plainville and Rentham. 
just curious as to whether you've seen the plan, whether you've had some thoughts on it or any comments you want to share as you, as you guys look ahead to the next five years if the license is renewed. Yeah, sure. I've been in um, contact with Christina Pappas, I think that's how you say your name, who is working on the plan right now and creating the different um, avenues of it. So we've been meeting periodically over the last few months since, since I, we came back to work. And uh, she's been sharing the ideas she has. She kind of bounced them off of me and, and we're making sure that we're including all the different areas so that they have input. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Sure. Commissioner O'Brien, do you have a question? I don't have a question, more a comment that um, obviously this is, the prior program was probably put together at a time that where we thought we were gonna be dealing with this before. Uh, we went into shutdown and modified conditions on reopening, but I did want to also comment on the responsiveness that um, the licensee has shown in terms of reopening, uh, the creativity and um, the relationship with um, us as regulators in terms of uh, the give and take and doing, getting them open, but also acknowledging our responsibility under that. I think Derby Day was a good example of um, finding creative ways to keep going, but keep going in a manner that's safe. So it's not something that's covered in this presentation, but I did also want to give a nod to the efforts that they've been doing in that regard. Um, just a comment, more than a question. I'll just add this, the, really the uh, same comment is that I wanted to extend in, in this uh, venue, my appreciation for the collaborative um, relationship that the PPC demonstrated throughout the difficult um, moments of both closing down in, in, in sort of a, a fast, responsible um, fashion, and then really working with us as partners to um, ensure a safe and sustainable reopening. And to Commissioner O'Brien's point, um, you um, exhibited uh, really a sense of uh, understanding of our responsibility as regulator and you put um, in place the, um, the tools that allowed you to comply with our standards and yet really um, operate open and operate successfully. And for that, um, we congratulate you. Um, I also just want to note that really, uh, when, I, when I look back at your employment numbers in terms of the goals that were established, uh, you know, they you exceeded them all, and they were rigorous goals. You, the, with the one exception, and and just to be to note, um, you know, it's a thirty. We had a thirty-five percent goal for local hire. Um, Thirty-one percent was achieved in at a time when unemployment was very very low. So it was a tough. It was tough to reach out. Um, I think you, you know, as operations continue to ramp up and the public health metrics shift, you'll have new opportunities for hiring. So I don't need for you to answer this now, but we look forward to, um, to uh, when we do reconvene um, in the future for our further uh, uh, licensing um, overview, uh, hearing you know, what your hopes are for um, achieving again, high standards on diversity, and um, uh, as well as Massachusetts and local hire. We, um, you know, I must say, when you look at your numbers, 303 million uh, revenues um, have been generated for the uh, tax purposes for the benefit of the, the Commonwealth. I think that actually is just short of 50% of the tax revenues that have been generated altogether. So as um, if we reflect on the Expanded Gaming Act as in, Economic Development Bill, and we see those revenues. You have you have accomplished um, that piece as well as when we see these employment numbers. We know that you were very mindful about the underlying goal of the Expanded Gaming Act. So I look forward to hearing what you know, what you will, how you will address the challenges going ahead as um, numbers of employees ramp up and you continue to work toward those goals. But again, um, I would just echo Commissioner Cameron's and Commissioner O'Brien's comments that you have been um, very collaborative partners 
and uh, congratulate you on, on the past successes. And I also fully appreciate uh, the, the technological um, goals that you're hopeful can be implemented in the future. So with that, Joe, do we, how do you, what's our next step? Unless um, commissioners, do you have anything else that you want to add? Okay, and again, um, we will have the um, ability to ask more nuanced questions in our full commission meeting on the relicensure steps going forward. This is a chance for us to hear from others. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so going forward now, we're gonna open this up uh, to public input. Um, and what we're planning on doing is going in the following order, uh, legislators first, host community, representative second, surrounding community representatives third, and impacted live entertainment venues, other organizations, and finally, uh, the general public. Um, we do have a list of about, I think, 24 people, 23 or 24 people who have registered to speak. So we'd ask folks to please keep uh, their comments to five minutes or less, if at all possible, um, just in interest of time. And I do have one request, if, if it uh, pleases the chair, um, Bill Keegan from the town manager from Foxborough uh, has another commitment and he is asked to be taken out of order. So since we're actually running a couple of minutes ahead, I thought we could, I see him on the screen here. I thought we could get him right in uh, so he can get to his other appointment. So thank you, thank you very much. If, it's a, if it pleases the committee, I'll be happy to uh, proceed now. Uh, just wanna say thank you to the commission for allowing me the opportunity to speak this afternoon in support of Plain Ridge uh, Park Casino. The, we, we feel that they have been a terrific partner for the community of Foxboro. Um, and so they, they've actually served as an anchor for Route 1 um, on both ends of the spectrum. So we have, uh, we have Foxboro, uh, we have Gillette Stadium at one end. We also have you know, the Plain Ridge Casino at the other end. We all, and we have Rentham Village in between. So we've worked very collaboratively with, with, Fox, with, uh, with Plainville, Rentham and uh, the casino to actually work on a, in a, on a, a plan that will actually help market this region as a tourism destination for obvious reasons because of the things that go on here in this region. So we appreciate the fact that the commission actually have funded a, a study uh, which was finalized. I think the, the first phase of the study was completed by June 30th. We're now working on the second phase of that right now, which is to help market at the region and to put information on websites, et cetera, to give the, uh, the area more exposure. Um, we think it's a key piece of the regional economy and we, we're grateful for the fact that we have a, a collaborative relationship with Plain Ridge and with our communities that surround us in helping to make this region a very successful um, um, economic area and an economic engine for this part, portion of the state. So we'll say thank you and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll conclude put my comments with that. We just wanna say thank you for the opportunity to speak and for the appreciation of the uh, Plain Ridge Park Casino um, Partnership. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, Mr. Keegan. Um, so next up we have uh, the uh, state legislators. Um, Senator Rausch also does have an early conflict, so we decided to take our, our senators first. So um, I guess we'll lead off with Senator Rausch and then followed by, followed by uh, Senator Feeney, who I think I've seen both on the screen at this point. So Senator Rausch. Thank you so much. Um, I also just saw Senator Feeney's face pop up, uh, my friend and colleague in the Senate and, and office mate, at least when we were in offices. Um, thank you again for inviting me to testify today. I am here to support the relicensure of Plain Ridge Park Casino. Um, as you know, and as you've heard during today's hearing, Plain Ridge is a really critical part of our community's economic infrastructure, especially for the host community of Plainville. Plainville, uh, excuse me, Plain Ridge also supports the surrounding communities with jobs and economic development, including several of the towns in my district, Plain, not only Plainville, but also uh, North Attleboro, and Rentham, Franklin, and the city of Attleboro. The economic impact also stretches to additional parts of my district due to the support that Plain Ridge provides for the standard bred horsing industry. So many of the horse farms in my district are supported by the park's operation and the presence of Plain Ridge strengthens these additional local economies as well. Further, public revenue generated from Plain Ridge Park is very important. Plain Will was able to build a completely new town hall and public safety building 
because of Plain Ridge. And I have to tell you on a personal note, it's beautiful, <laughs> absolutely beautiful, stunning. The whole complex is, is just phenomenal. The library is right there. It's really, it's really fantastic. And that was all made possible because of Plain Ridge. Um, and further, the revenue that might otherwise go out of state stays right here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because of Plain Ridge. So I just want to offer my, again, my support for relicensure. I want to thank the commission and all of our commissioners for your thorough review of the relicensing process. I very much appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for taking me out of turn. Thank you, Senator. Um, I guess next we will go on to uh, Senator Feeney. Great. Just Thanks. thank you, Senator. We appreciate your remarks very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you again for having me. Awesome. And I want to thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and, and to your staff and to, through you to the rest of the commissioners. I know it has been a challenging few months for everybody, and I can't imagine the amount of work that you've had to do, um, you know, to ensure safe reopening uh, and to make sure that we had a thriving, um, you know, gaming environment over these last few months. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work that you've been doing. Um, we just heard from Senator Rouch, who actually represents uh, Plain Ridge Park in her district, and is uh, Plain Ridge Park is not within the borders of my district I will tell you uh, that I really want to take this opportunity to perhaps give a little bit of a regional perspective um, just like we heard from um, town manager Bill Keegan a good friend and colleague uh, and offer my testimony in full support of relicensing for Plain Ridge Park as a legislator who focuses intently on job creation and economic development in and around my district uh, it must be noted that over the last five years Plain Ridge Park has been one of the largest sources of new job opportunities in the greater Attleboro region and I see Jack Lang from our Chamber of Commerce is on here as well, and I think he can testify to that fact that there has been an enormous uh, amount of job growth because of Plain Ridge Park. Um, in fact, I'm joining you today uh, at my house um, here in Foxborough, in the heart of the nine cities and towns that I represent and where many of the Plain Ridge employees call home. In addition to jobs though, Madam Chair, members of the commission, other meaningful economic uh, benefits of Plain Ridge have materialized over the years. While a lot of those negative impacts that were predicted by some never did materialize. As a local legislative delegation, we have been discussing master plans for the entire area. And I think we heard a little bit about this earlier, including transportation, cohesive branding and marketing strategies, tourism revenue, and a host of other issues. All of these potential plans, though, include Plain Ridge Park Casino, which is vital to generating direct trips to the casino, as well as surrounding restaurants, hotels, businesses and other venues. And beyond the positive economic activity that we enjoy with the success of Plain Ridge, I can tell you firsthand how important the facility is uh, to, to its local charities and the staff, uh, how supportive the staff has been to local charities. There are countless amount of times I've been to charitable functions and banquets and fundraisers at the facility and many more times I've been out in the district and heard from local organizations that have been supported by Plain Ridge in other ways. As you may know, Madam Chair, and I know uh, we've been promising kind of a racing modernization bill for a while, and I promise you we will get to that point, but the racing industry is one that is close to my heart for many reasons. Chief among them is the sustainability of our agricultural industry. Senator Rausch testified to the fact that many of the farms lie within her district. Job opportunities on both sides of the track and the preservation of open space in our communities. Prior to Plain Ridge, horse racing in all its forms was on life support. Now we have a thriving standard bread industry and related mass bread breeding program that is a direct result of Plain Ridge's support for racing. We cannot let that die. And it's vital that the good work and positive impact to our local businesses, neighboring communities, the racing industry and its workers that has been realized as a result of Plain Ridge Park Casino continues but also thrives. There is no doubt that this pandemic will have profound and lasting impacts on millions of Massachusetts citizens and the way business has been done. Plain Ridge is likely to be extremely affected, which is a source of great concern to me in the area of delegation. However, I can tell you, and I think um, you all testified to this a moment ago, that they have been forthright, honest, and transparent with the legislative delegation as they have with the regulatory body as they try and forge a path through the most recent challenge. From local staff to Penn National executives, they have kept me informed and engaged and should be an example for businesses in every sector. 
Madam Chair, I know that the commission and the legislature cannot control the public health environment that has become an enormous challenge for Plain Ridge and all the other gaming establishments. What we can do, however, is to ensure that we are putting Plain Ridge, a known and trusted entity, in the best position to succeed in the months and years ahead. And though this probably is a little bit out of scope for today's hearing, Madam Chair, I think it's important to note that Plain Ridge already competes with one hand tied behind its back as the gaming landscape in our region has changed in recent years. As we compete for players and revenue that crosses our border each day to visit Twin River or Newport Grant, it is not lost on me that any long-term strategy for continued success at PPC must include expanded opportunities in the form of table games. And while I'm optimistic that sports betting will be helpful to Plain Ridge if we can get that done in the legislature sometime soon, we see the need to expand its competitive resources in order to protect Massachusetts jobs and revenues. So with that, Madam Chair, members of the commission, presuming that Plain Ridge is relicensed, which again, I fully support, I look forward to working with all of you in the weeks and months ahead to maximize the benefits that can be realized by the legislature's vision years ago and by your expert stewardship since day one. So thank you again for the opportunity to testify in support of Plain Ridge today. And thank you again for all the work that you're doing on behalf of the Commonwealth in extremely difficult and challenging times. Thanks so much. Thank you, Senator, and, and, and thank you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully the next time, um, sooner than later. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, okay, so we're two for two, that's good. This is, we knew this was gonna be the most challenging part of our hearing. Um, so we're gonna move on to um, House members. Um, I am not seeing names of most of these folks. So I'm going to have to see if, you know, they're, if they're calling in. Um, uh, Representative Roy is here. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So first on my list, I had uh, Representative uh, Poirier. Uh, is she on the line? I okay. Um, did, did you have a phone number or were you expecting her to appear? I do know that Representative Roy also has a little bit of a time issue. So Representative Roy, I just want to make sure you're okay um, in terms of our timing. Are we all right, Joe, still on that? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, it might be helpful to remind folks on the, on, on the phone if they, hit, if they need to speak to hit star six to unmute, because they may not remember they have to unmute but so we can hear them. Right, because it's helpful for everyone else to mute. And so if you want to unmute, try star six. That usually works. Okay, I think we should go on to the next. Um, okay, well, well, since we have uh, Representative Roy here, why don't we start uh, there? Uh, that makes it a little easier. Excellent yeah. choice. I, I, <laughs> I solidly affirm that decision. Uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the commission, I want to thank you for the um, opportunity to be here today in support of the relicensing of the Plain Ridge Park Casino. And I'd really like to echo the sincere thoughts of my uh, colleagues and local officials. Uh, indeed, every community around the casino has benefited beyond uh, direct new employment as a result of economic activity that Plain Ridge drives to local hotels, restaurants, and retail venues. Uh, in my district, Franklin, uh, we have over 30 residents who are employed at Plain Ridge, and we have seen many businesses, including a brand new hotel that is uh, being constructed in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, and these types of businesses have opened their doors in order to serve uh, patrons from Plain Ridge Park. And Plain Ridge, uh, as Senator Feeney pointed out, has been a great neighbor, supporting many charitable entities and stepping up to the, stepping up to the plate to help out. The facility has also contributed to some great infrastructure improvements in the area. And I know that uh, Senator Rausch pointed out uh, uh, the uh, public safety facility, but uh, the roadways around that, uh, that facility have been greatly improved. And uh, finally, I wanna state that the impact on the racing industry itself cannot be overstated. Uh, prior to Plain Ridge, it was on life support and now Five years later, we have a thriving standard bred breeding program that is directly because of this facility support for racing. And the breeding program is a lifeline to many farm owners in my district. 
I didn't even know we had as many horse breeders in my district uh, until Plain Ridge uh, came into being. And these folks would otherwise be unable to continue to support themselves and their families uh, in the agricultural industry. The success is also preserving some uh, vast stretches of precious open space in our area. And uh, seeing this racing industry stabilize and now thrive again is a benefit uh, to everyone in the Commonwealth. And it's very much attributable to the foresight of the legislature, Speaker DeLeo, and of course, your work uh, on the commission. The negative impact that was predicted by opponents so many years ago is simply not materialized. We haven't seen any increases in crime or traffic accidents or other no, uh, negative social problems. It's vital that the good work and the good things that have happened as a result of the Plain Ridge uh, opening continue. And so I'm here today to offer my support for the relicensing of this asset to our community. I also uh, want to somewhat uh, highlight something that uh, Senator Feeney touched upon. And, and we know that the pandemic uh, has and will continue to have profound and lasting impacts on millions of Massachusetts citizens. And uh, Plain Ridge is also likely to be extremely affected uh, by this pandemic, which is a great concern to all of us in the delegation. I know the commission has little control of how uh, effectively Plain Ridge will be able to compete in this new environment, but uh, it would be remiss of me to not mention it. Uh, this is a regional gaming market that's ever-changing and extremely competitive. And we have intense competition from two casinos right over the southern border in Rhode Island. And as Senator Feeney pointed out, Plain Ridge is already competing with one hand tied behind its back. And it's the only casino in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that's uh, actively fighting against uh, businesses on its border. We certainly anticipate that Rhode Island is gonna try to recover jobs and revenue by aggressively competing against Plain Ridge. So uh, we'll need to address that issue at some point. We're optimistic that sports betting will be helpful to Plain Ridge and uh, we, but we're looking to expand uh, all competitive resources to protect Massachusetts jobs and Massachusetts revenues. So presuming that uh, Plain Ridge is relicensed, we look forward to working with you on this issue. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm happy to provide any additional information in support of the relicensing of Plain Ridge. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative. Thank you so much for appearing. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. This is Representative Poria. Oh, thank you. Excellent. You're up. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I didn't want to presume. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. First of all, <laughs> thank you so much for um, the legislators who have spoken before me, all very profound, and uh, we certainly share um, the best. Uh, wishes about Plain Ridge Park and everything that it has to offer. Uh, I represent all of the town of North Attleboro, one precinct in Attleboro, and two in Mansfield. And we have been a tremendous beneficiary as having uh, the largest number of employees at Plain Ridge Park from North Attleboro, which is um, just an amazing thing, and I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, every community around the casino has definitely benefited, and the negative impact that was predicted by opponents uh, has really never been realized. There are no increases of crime, traffic accidents. There's nothing negative that we can say about Plain Ridge. Um, You've heard most of this before, but I can't tell you the impact that the uh, uh, racing has had on all of the hay farms and the horse breeders, which are um, very prevalent in our area. And if Plain Ridge hadn't materialized, all of those places would have gone out of business or moved away. And it is such a benefit to our area to have all of this open space and this wonderful 
activity going on. You know, uh, prior to Plain Ridge, um, as you've heard, the town of Plainville um, probably uh, had so many difficulties at the time, and you have provided so much benefit to the town. And I can't tell you the impact the charitable giving has had. Um, I did hear Michelle mention some of them. Um, they are presently doing a backpack drive, uh, which is benefiting foster children, as many of them have been wiped out of homes during this pandemic. And um, this charitable endeavor to supply them with some new clothes and new uh, school supplies and backpacks uh, is just uh, an amazing thing. And I am so grateful to have been able to have this partnership with Plain Ridge, uh, who have been so willing to take some of these programs on. Uh, I certainly look forward to them being relicensed. And as, as you have already heard, expanding some of the things that they do certainly the sports betting and I am eagerly as well as uh, my colleagues looking forward perhaps to the table games and um, being able to be a, a real competitor with the uh, the gambling casinos and so forth which are south of us in another state so um, I commend them for everything they've done over the past five years and I thank the commissioners for their wisdom in uh, giving them the ability to do that and certainly hope you will continue their great service and presence in our communities. Um, it has been nothing but good. And they have my high praise for how they've conducted themselves and how they've contributed to the area. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to tell you um, just what an impact they've had on our area. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Representative Poirier. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, so why don't I give you the next sort of three in a row just so people know where they are, if they're on deck or, or whatever. So uh, the next up I have is uh, Representative Barrows, and then after that, Representative Howitt, and then after that, Representative Dooley, so if uh, Representative Barrows is on the line. And again, star six to unmute if you're on the phone. Okay, well, why don't we, we'll circle back, I guess. Um, uh, Representative Howitt. Um, Representative Dooley. Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Yes. Oh, oh, th 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 thank, thank God Howard and Barrows aren't here because there, there, there wouldn't be anything left to say <laughs> after <laughs> following the other legislators. Um, I th thank you very much for, for having me on. And obviously, I'm speaking strongly and in support of the uh, license renewal. I actually represent Plainville um, along with the surrounding communities, uh, Rentham, Norfolk, Millis, Medfield, and Walpole. Um, I don't want to reiterate what everyone else has already said about, you know, as far as sports book and table games and, and what, you know, you know, the, the, the advantages, you know, financially to our community. But what I wanted to kind of touch on is what a great partner uh, Plain Ridge has been to the town of Plainville. Um, throughout, you know, their five years being here, um, they have done a ton of uh, community service projects, whether it's sponsoring um, the, the King Philip uh, graduate, graduation night uh, ceremonies and the, and the sleepover to keep kids safe and you know, off, of, you know, off the streets and things along those lines to um, providing a food drive every year, uh, doing uh, contributions around Thanksgiving and, and around Christmas to local charity. And they've done all of this without being asked. They've, 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 they reached out to me, they reached out to the town and said, what can we do to help? We've heard about this issue. We know we have this opportunity. What can we do? Please let us know. And, and they, that has really been a great partner. And even during this pandemic, 
you know, obviously they were in a, in a really tough bind and, um, you know, like, like most people were. Um, and they went, you know, even though they didn't need to make the payments as quickly as they did, did and they and to get caught up, they came to the town and said, hey, what can we do? We know you guys are struggling. You know, we're able to do this right now. You know, I know we, are, we had this as, as our, our plan. We want to pay, uh, get caught up earlier to make sure that the town is better off going into the fall to make sure that they're able to bring some teachers back, make sure that we're able to continue to pay for our public safety building. Um, during the middle of the pandemic, while they were completely shut down, they, you know, I, I held a, you know, I partnered with Dairy Farmers of America and did milk giveaways throughout the, uh, you know, across the state. And uh, Plain Ridge uh, opened up their, their parking lot and their, their staff came out and helped man this for me. They, you know, they actually catered uh, breakfast for, for all the volunteers and the National Guard troops who were, who were giving milk away. And we were able to give away 2,500 gallons of milk to uh, people within the community. So those are the sort of things that they're able to do and they've done um, consistently. They, you know, whenever, wh whenever there's a need, they step up and they're there. And so they're really a good neighbor and a good partner and a good friend. And I think that is, is crucial. And I think that is, that, that is what we want out of our businesses, that they're not just businesses, you know, plopped down within our, in, in our community and using our resources. They're also a, um, you know, they're, they're truly a member of the community. You know, as, as everyone has stated, uh, we have a tremendous amount of uh, employees that actually live in my communities that work uh, at Plain Ridge. And, you know, it, it, it is a very, very positive environment. Um, and I guess the other area I'd like to speak on is, I, I'm also serving on, on the Plainville Fire Department. Um, and so from a public safety standpoint, um, I can say besides the fact that they've provided a tremendous amount of money and uh, other supplies and things along those lines for our new public safety building, um, there hasn't been any of the negative uh, impacts. We have, um, you know, we're, we're not having the, you know, all the, the doom and gloom projections that were, were some of the naysayers, you know, talked about uh, beforehand. So. It, it has been very, very positive. We have we have members of uh, Plain Ridge Fire there, you know, at basically 24 hours a day uh, when they're open, uh, you know, doing uh, EMT support. Um, and obviously, whenever the track is going, we have we have members there um, uh, provi providing uh, medical support for uh, for race day as well. And they've just been really, really good. I mean, they they you know whatever we need, whatever they can do to help. Um, they're very proactive. We we meet with their uh, with their leadership constantly, and they they say, all right, you know, what are we doing good? What are we doing bad? What can we improve upon? What are your thoughts? And they really they truly take it to heart, as opposed to you know a lot of other you know companies that just kind of give lip, lip service. So I would say my takeaway from it all, and what I'd like you to really um, understand is is how what a valuable member of our community they have become. And so I would, you know, I'm for, for no other reason, you know, there's a, there's a million other reasons which all the other legislators will talk about. But I think that from a personal nature, from the, the willingness to be you know, a good steward and a good partner and a good friend and a good actual true member of our community, that's so important on, and, and, and it crosses so many different levels. And, 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 I, and I know many people who were originally po opposed to it. That were that have been pleasantly surprised and, and are like, you know what, I didn't think it would be good. It has been great. And they go above and beyond. So thank you very much. And thank you. We um, appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, so we had two other uh, representatives on our list that we were not expecting to be here. Again, I just want to make sure that, you know, because we don't have everybody on video that that they are indeed are not here. So we had Representative Hawkins and Representative Soder. Um, are either one on the line? And Joe, should we also go back to Representative Barrows? And yes. Representative Hallett. And again, um, star six should unmute you. Um, We don't have. And, and if, if there are any any other representatives or senators who may have patched in, we'd be happy to hear from you at this point. Okay. Um, I guess none appearing. Um, 
So the next uh, segment is hearing from host community representatives from the uh, town of Plainville. We have with us. Uh, oh. oh, is somebody trying to be heard? No, I think we're all. Set. Okay, so we we have with us the chair of the board of selectmen, Brian Kelly, uh, the town administrator, Jennifer Thompson, chief of police, James Alfred, and the chief of the fire department, Justin Alexander. And I guess we'll start with um, the chair of the board of selectmen, uh, Brian Kelly, and I will turn it over to you, Brian, and you can just uh, lead into your, your other folks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of the commission for your time today and for the opportunity to testify in support of the relicensing of our friends and partners at Plain Ridge Park Casino. Uh, five years ago, this commission made a very wise decision when you awarded Penn National Gaming the Commonwealth's first casino license. It's hard to believe uh, that it's been five years already, and a big reason it's hard to believe it's been five years is because of how much positive uh, activity and uh, what a positive addition they've been to our community. Time flies when you're having fun here in Plainville. There hasn't been any negative impact to our town, our county, or our community since the grand opening in 2000. 2015. And as you will hear uh, shortly from our public safety leaders here in Plainville, uh, there has been virtually zero negative impact to Plainville during this time. Prior to the casino being approved, there were many opponents touting a massive social disruption, fears of traffic crime and decreased home values uh, seemed to cloud the judgment of many at that time. Traffic at this busy intersection on Route 1 and Route 495 is better today as a result of the improvements made by the casino to mitigate impacts than it was before the casino opened. Public safety has seen virtually no impact and property values are at all time highs. As was mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, the revenue generated from our host community agreement has allowed us to build and bond a new state of the art municipal complex. Being able to complete a project of this magnitude without requiring an increase in the residential and commercial tax rates is almost unheard of and I believe it to be the first in the Commonwealth. What has happened during the last five years in Plainville as a result of your decision has been nothing but positive for our town and truly a gift. Hundreds of new jobs have been created. A legacy industry in the Commonwealth horse and harness racing has been revitalized, bringing not just economic growth to farms, suppliers, and vendors, but preserving a vast amount of open space that benefits every resident of Massachusetts. Millions in tax dollars and economic activity have been injected into the region, and just as importantly, millions have been repatriated from Rhode Island. Plain Ridge, especially prior to the pandemic's impact, has evolved into a major entertain uh, entertainment destination source in the region uh, that has sought to bring thousands of patrons to our hotels, restaurants, and retail venues. Plainville and our surrounding communities all directly benefit from the additional local tax receipts as a result of this increased economic activity. It is no understatement to say that your decision five years ago truly was game changing. We want to acknowledge that not only was your decision wise, but that your stewardship of this industry and the partnership that exists between the town of Plainville, the Massachusetts Gaming Commission and Penn National Plain Ridge is what truly made this work. There is no ambiguity here. Your standards are rigorous, our expectations are high, and this operator meets uh, this operator and this property meet and exceed them both. This is why it is with great enthusiasm that we all collectively urge you to once again validate that decision and hope that you will relicense this facility. Before I close, I'd like to make you aware of our concern for the future. I fully understand that much of uh, our future concern is beyond the direct control of the commission at this time. However, it's not often as a town you get this opportunity. I'd like to clearly communicate the potential future issues that are keeping us up at night. We know that this pandemic has ravaged so many lives and that so much of our uh, economy has been impacted. It is bound to alter the future in ways that we cannot anticipate, but also uh, in some ways that we can anticipate. For example, we know that the race will be on to restore jobs and recover revenue once the local economy is able to fully reopen and current safety protocols become unnecessary. The Commonwealth will seek to do uh, that and so will our neighboring states of Rhode Island and Connecticut. From where we sit on the Rhode Island border, our eyes are just as much on what Twin River is doing and is allowed to do as they are on what Plain Ridge is doing and more to the point what it's not allowed to do. 
and it is to the credit of any, everyone involved that Plain Ridge has been as successful as it has been while being limited by law in its competitive resources that are at its disposal. It's the only casino in the Commonwealth that is fighting a two-front war on the border. We understand that the law that set this industry here in Massachusetts were written this way and everyone knew the rules before we all got started. But the world has changed a lot since then and will be changing even more in the months and years ahead as everyone struggles to recover from the pandemic. When things are finally in place to fully reopen, it would be ideal if we were in a position to create even more jobs, repatriate even more revenue from Rhode Island, and be at a level of competitive footing with our direct competition to the South. Plainville's beautiful new municipal complex that was built without an additional taxpayer dollar, uh, it, was, it was paid for through a bond that was entered into, um, which was predicated on some very conservative financial forecasts of Plainbridge's performance. Given the increased competition from the South, margins uh, being compressed, and the impact from the pandemic, loss of revenue, um, you know, it's been more severe than we kind of even could have predicted. Um, if the full reopening is met with a whimper rather than a roar, our community might may find itself in a very perilous financial predicament, uh, given the bond that we've entered into. We know that much of this is beyond your control today, but we did want to take the opportunity during, the, uh, during this public forum to communicate our fears and concerns about being able to compete in the future with respect to current laws, regulations, and guidelines that are in place. We have world-class partners in Penn National Gaming who have had such a positive impact on our community. We humbly uh, ask for your support and approval of the current, light, current license renewal, and we hope that when the time is right to expand, we have your support there as well. Thank you all very much for your support to this point and your time today, and your continued support for the future growth of our local economy here in Norfolk County. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Uh, so Jennifer Thompson, uh, town administrator, uh, is next. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. It's great to see all of you, although I do look forward to seeing you in person once again at our um, beautiful town hall. So I look forward to the day that we can have you back there and, um, and hold our meetings there. I'd like to echo some of Selectman Kelly's comments and that he made during his testimony today and reiterate what an important role that Plain Ridge has played in terms of not only the town of Plain, Plainville's economic development, but also its impact on the region as a whole in terms of growth in businesses and employment. You'll hear later this evening um, from members of our surrounding communities on how Plain Ridge has helped to stimulate tourism, employment, and the economy in our region, and how the Gaming Commission's decision to issue the first gaming license in the state to Penn National has had a tremendous impact, a positive impact on Plainville, on the region, the state, and, and the com on our region of the state and the Commonwealth as a whole. As was mentioned by Mr. Kelly, our host community agreement has provided funding to make debt and interest payments on our brand new state-of-the-art municipal complex, which many of you have visited. Five years ago, our police officers, our firefighters, our town hall employees were performing their duties in incredibly challenging working conditions. The former town hall and public safety buildings had been used long beyond their useful life, and employees worked in facilities without adequate heat, air conditioning, proper ventilation, we had issues with plumbing and significant constraints in terms of proper office space, adequate storage for the town's vital records, and available space for public meetings. Both buildings were not handicapped accessible, which caused significant challenges for both our disabled and our senior residents. Thanks to the Gaming Commission and Penn National, our new facilities have completely tra transformed the town center district and have provided our employees with appropriate workspaces and the resources that they need to perform their jobs. These buildings have become even more critical during the pandemic. Often, over the last several months, we have all paused and thought to ourselves, how could we have even functioned in the old buildings, um, especially during this time? Um, and how could we have provided our employees in the old buildings with safe social distancing and, and protection during this challenging time? So we, we've thought of a lot over the last few months about how fortunate we are to be in the buildings that we're at, um, especially uh, during the pandemic. Members of our community have been able to meet in beautiful and spacious meeting rooms, which have provided a chance 
for residents to become more active and involved in local government. And none of this would have been possible without a major tax increase in Plainville if it had not been for Plain Ridge and the Gaming Commission issuing Penn National a license to operate in the town of Plainville. I would also be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the efforts and generosity of the Gaming Commission in providing us with public safety equipment and funding for regional tourism and marketing efforts through the Gaming Mitigation Fund. And I would also like to acknowledge that Plain Ridge and Penn National um, has been an incredible partner in terms of reopening and how safely and responsible they have been and have worked collaboratively with our Board of Health and Public Safety folks to reopen safely um, during the pandemic. You will hear shortly from our public safety chiefs about how positive our relationship has been with Plain Ridge. Um, but before I end my comments, I really want to provide some real world context in terms of our relationship with Plain Ridge and Penn National. Our country and world experience, experience something that we could have hardly ever imagined. A pandemic that would impact all of our lives and result in a temporary closure of Plain Ridge until July. As we've mentioned several times throughout the discussion today, the payments on our newly constructed municipal complex come directly from the host community payments from Plain Ridge. Under this agreement, given this tremendous impact on Penn National's revenue, since they were completely closed, the company could have easily made the argument that they would not be able to honor their required monthly payments to the town. They, in fact, did the complete opposite. Penn National reached out to us very early during the shutdown and assured us that they would still provide the town with the much needed revenue, especially given the dire financial situation that the town was in. We met collaboratively with Penn National and they assured us that they understood how devastating it would be if the town could not make the payments on the municipal complex and they would work with us to make up the payments. Not only did Penn National keep their word and honor these promises, but they also went the extra mile. Although we had agreed to allow them to delay certain payments for several months, they stepped up in June and made the town whole well before the schedule that we had anticipated and agreed upon. To say this was appreciated by the town during one of its most difficult financial times would be an understatement. We often hear, and I think Commissioner Cameron alluded to this earlier, the need for public and private partnerships to make government work better. In my 24 years of municipal service, I can have no greater example of this type of positive partnership than the one between Penn National, the Town of Plainville, and the Gaming Commission. We would respectfully ask that you grant Penn National their license renewal and help us keep them competitive so that we can continue with this incredibly positive relationship. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration today. And I think next up will be Chief Alfred, our police chief. Yes, uh, up next, uh, uh, Chief of Police James Alfred, and thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate your input. Good afternoon, Chief. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. And thank you for the opportunity to also testify today in support of the licensing of Plain Ridge Park Casino. As mentioned, uh, we reached the five, over the five-year mark uh, of the opening of Plain Ridge Casino. And as the chief, I'm happy to report that Plain Ridge continues to have little impact on our community as it relates to criminal activity or additional traffic issues. Five years ago, Commissioner Cameron, myself, and the area chiefs began a dialogue on how to measure any potential impacts to both Plainville and the surrounding communities. The contract of an independent analyst was discussed with Commissioner Cameron, who saw the benefit of such a project in order to be able to measure increases or decreases of activity in Plainville and surrounding communities. The analytical work by Christopher Bruce in the area of crime trends and traffic analysis has been a tremendous ongoing transparent resource to be able to study any potential impacts that have um, been a result of the opening of Plain Ridge Park. Um, I believe the executive summary that Chris prepared last year um, stated that there was really, uh, he was unable to make any clear relationship of increases in crimes as it related to Plain Ridge Casino, either in Plainville or the surrounding community. Um, I think Christopher Bruce uh, uh, has done an excellent job on that project uh, uh, through the last five years. Uh, we continue to have an effective presence of, at Plain Ridge with both state and local police on the gaming task force. We also have a uniformed Plainville officer at the facility on a daily basis. 
Uh, I would also like to recognize uh, Captain Brian Connors and Lieutenant Mike Scanlon, and especially Brian Connors, who I've worked with since the very beginning. You know, we were the first to open, uh, and this was on the ground for us. And um, uh, they're both great, great uh, um, supervisors, but also uh, we believe in teamwork, and uh, I think we work, we've worked really well together. You know, as a chief of police, uh, something I keep my ear open for is the fear of crime. I'm in the community, uh, and um, I can tell you that not from one resident or even patrons that anyone has ever approached me saying that uh, they felt that anything had changed in Plainville when the uh, casino opened, a lot that anyone was afraid of any, any increase in crime or perceived increase in crime. Um, we also have a great working relationship with all levels of Penn National Management at Plain Ridge. They do a great job at pre-planning events, and we're always included in those uh, planning uh, meetings for any type of events at Plain Ridge that involve the police. Uh, as mentioned by our town officials, the host community agreement with Penn National, which enabled the town to be able to build a beautiful municipal complex, which includes a public safety facility in town hall, that will serve the town for generations in the future. I can't ever imagine that we would ever uh, outgrow this facility. Um, the, bill, the building has made the job much safer for our officers and we're able to provide a community space when needed for any type of uh, small community event. Um, we can now host training classes. We have proper holding facilities, proper ventilation. And, and that's key. Um, let me say that if we were in our old building, we had two officers that contracted COVID-19 had we been in that old police station, uh, we would not have had the ventilation. And there were, I believe we probably would have lost half the police department um, as a result of them contracting COVID-19. So um, we were blessed to have this building um, when they did contract that because again, only two offices uh, were affected by that. Um, we now have weather protection for our fleet modern evidence room, evidence processing area. In short, we're able to improve every function we need to perform on a daily basis in our new facility. And I would like, also like to thank the commission for the grant funding program offered each year. Uh, this is a tremendous benefit, not only to Plainville, but to the surrounding communities as a way to obtain additional equipment and support for their particular projects. And once again, thank you for your time today and uh, your continued support. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Same here. Okay, uh, thank you. And next up is uh, Justin Alexander, Chief of the Fire Department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, great to see you again uh, in this virtual setting. Uh, I think the last time I saw you, we were down in our public safety building that everybody's talking about. Um, you know, a lot, when you go last, I guess a lot's already been said. So, um, I thought maybe I would take us back five years. I remember sitting uh, in the big hall when the vote was had and we got the license. And I say we, Plainville and Penn. Uh, and I remember driving home going down the expressway thinking, boy, five years, that's a long time from now. I can't imagine where we'll be. And here I am in my office, um, you know, and that's thanks to the commission. That's thanks to the work that Penn has done. Uh, you know, we have a, a fire truck that can get in the garage. That was a, an issue we came up with and the commission helped us out with that. And Penn was a huge supporter to get us that. Uh, radio is a cardiac monitor. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without everything that's happened. And it's been all positive. We haven't had any issues um, with that. And we were the first, you know, Penn came to Massachusetts and had to deal with the town of Plainville and the way the state is. And, I'll tell you, true professionals, uh, I, you know, Lance and I, we had many a meeting and, and we were able to sort out any issues we had prior to the opening and it's been smooth sailing since. Um, we still have great collaboration and go forward and, and any issues we have come up with over the last five years have never had to be escalated even beyond my level, um, usually handled even below my level, Lance's level, because the, the staff we have both at, Plan, at Plain Ridge and the Plainville Fire Department in the town are outstanding. So uh, with, with the fact that we're here and there's been so much positive and so little negative, no negative, uh, I give my full support to uh, Penn National Gaming and Plain Ridge Park Casino uh, to their renewal and, and I hope you feel the same way when you vote. Thank you, Chief. 
Okay, um, so that concludes uh, the host community representatives. So now we'll move on to the surrounding communities. We've already heard from uh, Bill Keegan, the Foxborough town manager. Uh, so next up we have uh, Jamie Helen, uh, Franklin town manager. And then after that, Rachel Benson, the Rentham Director of Planning and Economic Development. So, uh, Mr. Helen. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank, you. thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, uh, for your time today and opportunity to speak about this very important economic development issue for our area. Uh, we support the renewal of this license to help maintain the region's economic impact in our area. Uh, as many of you know, Franklin greatly benefits from this facility to maintain what we kind of call the spillover economic activity that Franklin has enjoyed from the Plain Ridge Park Casino. Uh, we're just a mere couple exits down uh, 495. I'd like to bring to the attention of the commission the perspective of communities along this uh, area. The, uh, the Plain Ridge Park uh, facility has been a true source of economic development for all of us. Plain Ridge has become one of our region's largest employers, including well over 30 employees here just in, in, in my community that I represent. Uh, also important are vendor contracts and uh, many relationships uh, in each one of those communities. Uh, as many of you know, Plain uh, all the surrounding communities, including Franklin, uh, share a regional dispatch center for public safety, and we also share many other services. All the town managers have an excellent working relationship together, and we try to support one another uh, as much as possible. It is also a major entertainment destination source in the region that has brought thousands of patrons to our hotels, restaurants, and retail venues, uh, which has brought Frank to an additional local tax receipt uh, from all that economic activity. In fact, prior to COVID-19, all our local hotels were seeing an excess of 80 to 85% occupancy. Uh, we certainly hope to get back there someday. Large part of that occupancy uh, is due to the Plain Ridge Casino. As we kind of frequently say here in Franklin, uh, we are the largest community in the region, but we do see a lot of spillover activity uh, from Great Woods Amphitheater, Gillette Stadium, hockey tournaments in Marlboro, and Plain Ridge Casino has really been the latest uh, amenity in the area. Uh, to be able to showcase um, uh, that economic activity here in Franklin. Uh, Franklin just recently permitted, in fact, a fourth hotel about a year ago uh, in town, partly due to that demand, Suites by Hilton, uh, which is about half built at the current time. And, and hopefully, once we make it through COVID, um, they will be able to finish that project. Uh, for the town of Franklin, these hotels bring in a significant source of revenue and hotel motel taxes, which the town appropriates each year toward its roads and infrastructure um, just off the interstates on many, many of our major roads in the community. Uh, so finally, it's critical to maintain our competitive advantage for communities that border the state of Rhode Island, to maintain good, jo maintain good jobs, positive economic activity for our hotels, restaurants, and consumer economy in Franklin. Overall, with two major exits here in Franklin off 495 and a thriving commercial sector around those exits, more people come to Franklin each day than leave uh, Franklin. Um, and a major part of that is certainly Plain Ridge, Plain, Plain, Plain Ridge uh, Resort Casino. Uh, by supporting this license renewal, it's just a small thing the Commonwealth can do to assist us in ensuring our business activity thrives here in town, especially as we hope to climb out of this COVID era. So thank you very much for your time today, and we urge you to renew this license. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the Commission. Thank, thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Uh, so next up we have uh, Rachel Benson, uh, Rentham Director of Planning and Economic Development. I think I saw her online earlier. I am and the, the sun is coming right through my window. Beautiful day. Thank you all for having us here. Um, this is my first time so um, I'll go. I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has already said, all good things. So um, what I'm going to go so is just go into a little bit more about the tourism and marketing strategy that we used um, some of the grant money for, which actually came from Frank from uh, Foxborough, which is, you know, says a lot as well that they used that grant to, to help also Plain Ridge, but the surrounding communities as well. And so that, to me, says a lot about how you know, this is really a part of our, all of our towns, and we all sort of welcome each other. Um, so of 18,000 residents, um, we, our three towns manage over 20 million visitors each year. Um, and we each have our own destination, Rentham Premium Outlets, of course, Plain Ridge Casino, 
and at Fal Foxborough's Gillette Stadium and Patriot Place, along with supercharged electric go-karts, who knew? Um, with Plain Ridge, all these other developments have come up, um, including the expansion of Patriot Place and the shopping there, but also dining, um, open space, recreation, arts and culture, um, and as Jamie was talking about, um, lodging. We've just opened up one that's in both Plainville and Rentham um, for right down the street from, to make this a multi-day type of uh, destination as opposed to just one day, coming in on a bus and leaving the same day. We want people to make this a multi-stay um, trip. And we also saw with those two new um, in casinos opening in Rhode Island, we did see the need for this marketing and tourism um, study because, you know, Plain Ridge has a lot to a lot to do in this area: jobs, housing, development. The spillover that you wouldn't even think of, you know, is is immense. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say now. <laughs> Thank, thank you, and we understand that probably many of your sentiments have been stated, so we appreciate your, the extra value that you just added, and it was distinctly different, so thank you so much. Joe? Okay, so um, next up are the, uh, is the impacted live entertainment venues, um, and we have Troy uh, Seibel's president and CEO of Hanover Theater to speak uh, next. Uh, chairing the Worcester Performing, excuse me, the Massachusetts Performing Arts Center Coalition. We are a group of theaters that uh, did some interfacing with all of the casinos prior to their licensing back a uh, number of years ago, um, including with, with Penn National. And um, our concerns at the time were really based around the, the history of uh, live, excuse me, uh, of uh, resort casinos bringing in performances that really heavily impact nonprofit and municipally owned performing arts centers. We signed a very friendly letter of agreement at that time with uh, Penn National and are happy to say that we haven't, haven't seen any negative impact at all from, from the casino. And, and from us, I think maybe no negative impact is a very positive thing. Um, we are um, happy for the relationship. And in fact, um, the, the Penn National's been really great about um, being open to the idea of discussing potential uh, co-marketing opportunities. We've, we've, um, we've sort of uh, committed in good faith to discuss some of those things recently, but our venues right now are in, a, are in turmoil, uh, needless to say, due to the pandemic. So it's not a great time for us to have detailed conversations about that, but we're anxious to do so um, and are confident that the, that the facility will open and have those conversations with us. Um, as we uh, as we are able to, but um, we are um, grateful for the relationship. We have had, um, I will be frank and say, um, frustrating um, conflict with the other two casinos, and so we are grateful not to have that in Plain Ridge, and and uh, anxious to see them continue and and grow and succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, sort of for lack of a, a better category, we've, we're calling the next uh, group Other Organizations. Um, and the first uh, person we have up is Jack Lank, who's president of the United Regional uh, Chamber of Commerce. And why don't I give you just the next couple so that they know that they're on deck. Uh, we have Raymond Campbell, after that, president of the Standard Bread Owners, Owners of Massachusetts, uh, George Pinedo, Lancaster Packaging Regional Sales Manager, and then Marianne Campiasano, MAC Graphics. So uh, with that, uh, Jack, I will turn it over to you. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, commissioners. Thank you for letting me speak today. Um, <clears throat> on behalf of myself and the Board of Directors of the United Regional Chamber of Commerce, uh, we are in full support of renewing this license. Uh, we are the largest business organization in the region. We cover the 16 communities that surround uh, Plainville. 
Um, we started working with Plainridge Park Casino uh, long before five years ago uh, when they opened up their doors. Uh, they sent their team up uh, and we were able to work together to um, introduce them to uh, a lot of the facilities in the area. And these are some of the same partnerships that they share today. Um, you know, we've had significant growth because of Plainridge Park Casino and all of the folks that they have uh, brought together as employees and as well as patrons. Uh, they are one of the larger employers in our area, uh, which we significantly appreciate, uh, especially during these crazy times. Uh, there is millions of revenue that is generated uh, for the state and also for the local communities that we all depend on. Um, this staff supports and volunteers at uh, most of the charities in the area. They lend their expertise uh, on the different board of directors uh, to help us all keep on the right track. Um, the racing side uh, has been very significant in keeping uh, over 150 families in our area employed. Um, and with all the hay farms, the, the um, grain, attack everything, the horse farms in our area, um, they would have all gone away if it wasn't for Penn National and Plain Ridge Park Casino. Um, as far as diversity, uh, they have uh, been uh, very, very important to us. They support our uh, WIN network, our Women's Impact Network. As a matter of fact, we had uh, the very first uh, Women's Expo and uh, Commissioner Cameron was very kind enough to come and be our, our guest speaker that day. Um, and uh, Plain Ridge Park Casino and their team uh, put on a tremendous day for, uh, we have well over 100 attendees uh, of uh, local business owners here in the area. Um, with some of that growth, uh, as you've heard from some of the town managers in the area, we actually have four hotels uh, ready to be completed uh, because of the number of folks that are visiting our area. I also uh, am lucky enough to sit on the uh, uh, Convention of Visitors Bureau for Southeast Massachusetts, uh, and they're a big part of tourism and uh, bringing many, many thousands of people uh, to our area every month. Um, all I can ask is that you uh, give them consideration. Uh, we would be lost if Plain Ridge Park Casino was not uh, able to renew their license. And uh, on behalf of uh, my board of directors, myself, and the entire membership, uh, we truly appreciate everything that Plain Ridge Park has done for us, the support that they have given, not only to my organization, but to all of the uh, other nonprofits in the area, the employees that they uh, employ every single day. Uh, so we just ask that you consider renewing your license and uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Okay, um, so next up we have uh, Raymond Campbell, president of the Standard Bread Owners of Massachusetts. Good afternoon. Uh, every year, the commission is provided with an update of the Standard Bread Breeding Program. And earlier today in Steve O'Toole's presentation, he pointed out many of the highlights in growth and opportunities for Massachusetts Standard Bread horse breeders and farm owners. It's very difficult to see that any of this growth would have been positive or possible without Plain Ridge Park. With the stability for breeders of having a place to race their horses, <coughs> the growth in the mass breeding program has been moving in a positive direction. With more mass bred horses now of racing age, Plain Ridge Park has been offering more restricted races, which will even allows more opportunities for mass bred horses to race. Another area that Plain Ridge Park has been a good partner is in the cooperation of staff members to help with whatever they can. Paul Verrett, the race secretary, has been more than willing to help in pretty much any way he can, from scheduling race days, being flexible on race days, and the scheduling of them, and creating more opportunities for mass bred horses to race in these restricted races. In the paddock on race days, Greg Fulton the paddock judge is a valuable asset and in making sure everything runs smoothly. Steve O'Toole, the director of racing, works very closely with the breeders program and is always willing to help. I'd also like to point to highlight the, the working relationship between Dr. Alex Lightbaum 
and the staff at Flame Ridge Park. They work very closely with us, the, the breeders, to keep things moving forward. In closing, the partnership with Plain Ridge Park is a very positive element in the growth of standard bred breeding in Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Uh, so up next, we have George Pinedo, uh, Lancaster Packaging Regional Sales Manager. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Well, thank you. Good. Um, our company, Lancaster Packaging, is a, a minority and woman-owned small business, and we have been doing business with Plain Ridge Park since the opening. Uh, they gave us a shot at bidding on their janitorial supply, uh, and we went in, gave it our best shot, and to our surprise, we actually won... 25 of the items, which is kind of something that is not seen because normally they want everything wrapped up into one bundle. But Plain Ridge Park was able to give us a shot at just giving X amount of product. And that was huge for us because what it did was it allowed us to go out and do other RFQs and bids uh, throughout the state and uh, New England with the items that we had bid on from Plain Ridge, only because what that did was it gave us better pricing. And that's kind of unheard of for a small business to be able to say, wow, they, they actually gave us a shot at being able to bid X amount of product instead of the whole did, which was very big. And our uh, relationship just went forward from there. Uh, we also have a side of the house that does purchasing services. And when they became aware of that, they gave us the opportunity to bid on some items from local businesses that didn't have their mass gaming licenses. So we went out <clears throat> and we would buy the product and sell it to Plain Ridge, and it was a twofold thing. Not only did we, not only were we able to sell it to them, but the local business was able to sell it to us. So that also was a great thing to see. Yeah. Now, only because they could have gone elsewhere, some other part of the country, and gotten that from people that have a license, so on and so forth, but they wanted to keep it within the region. And that was one thing that I was very impressed with when we would sit down with the purchasing people and talk to them. They always wanted to keep the buying within the region as much as possible. And again, that is just something we don't see too much from other corporates around. And when we started doing business with them on the purchasing uh, services side, we started to learn more about the casino business. And that gave us a hands up on the other two casinos in Massachusetts, which we've also done business with. And if we lose Plain Ridge, it would be a sad day, I think for all of us. Only because to be honest with you, I just, I see them as, a type of small casino that you can go in and talk to and they're ready to receive you in and they're very friendly and I'll tell you what if I had a vote somehow some way I would vote yes with no problem whatsoever so basically that's that's all I have to say and I guess it's been a great relationship for the last five years with them and it's just I, I don't see how we cannot allow a business like that to flourish within the Massachusetts area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And um, next up, we have Marianne Campiasano from MAC Graphics. Thank you very much. 
it's, and you did a very good job pronouncing my name. <laughs> it's Camposano, but it's a long one. Um, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to speak in favor of Plain Ridge Park Casino today. Um, Mac Graphics is a certified woman-owned business with a global approach. Drawing on my experience at the Boston Globe and Arnold Worldwide, we opened in 2012. Working only with agency-trained creative teams, we were able to deliver professional branding projects. And the entire process is managed by a team that works to exceed expectations on time and within budget. This thinking and performance allows us to reach many markets at one time with the unique ability to respond quickly and efficiently to unexpected and immediate situations that, that might arise in some businesses. And we're happy to say that we've been able to pull off a few miracles when necessary. We greet the customer at the entrance to Plain Ridge Park Casino on the Boulevard banner with our outdoor banners and the signage at the racetrack. Once they're inside the building, the messaging is reinforced from window clings, elevator and floor graphics, wall murals, backdrops, canvas prints, cafe barriers, t-shirts and pens. Oh, and also in the restrooms. My personal pride is the flyover mur mural at Flutie's restaurant. That was fun. Anyway, this is brand consistency at its best on so many platforms. Forms. And Plain Ridge, working with Plain Ridge to achieve that has been a great experience. The back of the house is another area where we have worked with Plain Ridge to reinforce both positive and safety related messages to their valued staff. In a nutshell, we offer the creative power and industry connections of a full service agency with the personal service and attention to detail we can only get from a small business. Plain Ridge Park Casino has opened so many avenues for us. They've given us the opportunity to stretch ourselves in both method and materials. <clears throat> Even before they opened, we were able to work closely, very closely with Michelle Collins to create an environment of diversity and support to the staff. We appreciated the opportunity and the confidence shown by Michelle to our company by having us create print and install these inspirational messages. Excuse me. But it isn't just the products and services that we've provided to them that has helped grow our business. We have been afforded the wonderful opportunity to collaborate with their diverse and professional staff on a number of challenging projects. <clears throat> we don't feel that we have ever had to work in a vacuum our input is received and heard, and the result is that we have solved the challenge together. Plain Ridge has had the confidence in our abilities to allow these solutions to be reached, and we're very grateful for that. This in turn has allowed us to gain experience and confidence that we bring to our other clients. So it isn't just Mac Graphics that benefits from this company. Their presence is far reaching. From our little company in Massachusetts to our other valued clients and to our vendors, Plain Ridge has made a very big difference in a very good way. Um, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak on the value that Plain Ridge Park Casino brings to the community. And um, I just wanna say that they're a great addition. I've loved working with them for uh, probably about six years now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the that uh, finishes up the uh, other organizations category, and now it's on to the uh, general public, where we have uh, three Plainville residents have registered with us to speak. Uh, um, and the first one is Luke Travis. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, uh, commissioners, for inviting me to speak. Um, my name is Luke Travis. I live at 101 Pleasant Street in Plainville, uh, probably about a mile and a half uh, from the casino. I've been a resident of Plainville since 1994. Uh, I'm a local conveyancing attorney. Uh, 
practicing uh, primarily in Bristol County. Um, and I also hold uh, a couple of roles here in town. I've been the town moderator uh, for about six or seven years. Um, but my most important role, I think, to myself is I've been on the uh, permanent building committee in town uh, since about 2016. Uh, so when the casino was first approved, one of the first town meeting votes that was taken uh, relative to that after its approval uh, was to designate that our, our community host agreement funds uh, would be dedicated uh, to a capital account, not to be used for operating expenses, but only for capital expenditures. Uh, and that has turned out to be uh, the best vote that the town has probably taken in its history. Uh, we've leveraged that account um, to be able to purchase a very large open uh, space piece of land on the western side of town uh, that was going to be a large residential development, but fortunately for the town, it was in chapter, uh, and the developer had to offer it to the town first. And typically, when a town is offered that situation, they have to politely decline. In our case, we were able to uh, execute on that and purchase that property, and we use that capital account to do so. Um, that was minor, however, compared to uh, the new town hall public safety complex that we now have in town. Uh, that was a $36 million project. Uh, I've been on that committee, like I said, since 2016. And uh, if it wasn't for uh, the casino and the capital account, uh, none of that would have happened. Uh, we were operating out of uh, basically uh, facilities that were built at the turn of the last century, uh, the century before. Um, and really, um, our fire and police in the town hall was not operating up to anything that was modern and standard. We are now, and we service our community very well with those facilities. I, I'm sure some of the commissioners were there at the uh, ribbon cutting, um, and it's, it's turned out to be really a gem of the town. Um, it's really come into a lot of use uh, in this pandemic in terms of the public safety and what they've been able to use with that facility. Um, so I can't speak strongly enough about the casino. Um, I, I don't go there a lot, a lot, but I've probably been there half a dozen times. I enjoy myself when I'm there. Um, and I think it's a terrific uh, facility. Uh, there was a lot of concern in our town about traffic. And I get off that exit um, twice a day, every day. And I have never had a problem uh, getting to my home. Um, it's just been a, a seamless uh, transition in terms of that, and it's added nothing but benefit to our town. Uh, so that's my contribution. Uh, I'm glad you asked me to speak today. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Travis. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, so next up, we have uh, Tim Mullen, also a Plainville resident. Mr. Mullen, you're on mute now. Let me see if I can help. Thank you. Uh, thank good you. afternoon. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Tim Mullen. I am a uh, Plainville resident for the past 30 years. Uh, I'm also the current chairman of the Finance Committee. Um, I am a vice president at Citizens Bank, um, working out of Rhode Island. Um, Plain Ridge Park has really been a great place socially. Uh, I don't want to repeat a lot that has been said, but it's really a great place for our community. It's an excellent entertainment venue, hosting events and options, whether it be restaurants or music or, or racing events, uh, all positive feedback that I have heard from residents. Uh, they, the presentation on the what they give to local charities is absolutely great. Uh, economically, uh, we, it's been stated, but we're certainly blessed to have the benefits like our new town hall and public safety buildings. Uh, many uh, of my friends and fellow residents have jobs there. And I think the important thing is that they really seem to like their jobs there. They're good jobs and a good company to work for. So um, I would just say, I would echo what uh, Representative Dooley said, that um, Plain Ridge is now a big part of what really defines Plainville now. And residents are proud to have Plain Ridge as part of their 
town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Yes, thank you. And um, last on our list of, of folks who has registered is uh, Kathy Parker, also a, a Plainville resident. I should say last but not least. Um, hello and thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you today. My name is Kathleen Parker. I'm a 45 year resident in the town of Plainville. I retired in 2018 after a 38 years career as Plainville's treasurer collector. I was a supporter of the, of the casino from the very beginning, I want to say very proudly. In fact, I wrote a letter to this commission back in 2013 to endorse the transfer of the host community fee from our way to Penn National. I consistently spoke to the community about the benefits that I believe the host community agreement would guarantee to the taxpayers, and I truly believe that those benefits have been realized. Previous speakers have spoken to those, the main points of that agreement, but I just want um, to uh, reiterate one point, and I think Jennifer made it. Um, when COVID hit, uh, we all know the casino and the track were left without uh, a revenue stream, stream, suffering along with everyone else, but they held true to their commitment to the town. They made a, a, us whole so that when we closed the books or they closed the books, on June 30th, a terrible year was a, very, a little less terrible. So today I want to state emphatically that I continue to support the casino and I hope for a positive vote um, when the, the commission uh, looks at their renewals so that they can continue to operate Plain Ridge Park Casino. So today what I want to do is talk about some benefits our community has realized that go beyond that host community agreement. And I'll highlight just a few things to illustrate how residents of Plainville are positively impacted on a daily basis. The night before the casino opened to the public, I attended the soft opening. The proceeds from that evening's betting, uh, evening's betting were distributed to local nonprofits that operated in at least four communities. The town administrator at the time, Joe Fernandes, and I had the honor of suggesting the Plainville nonprofit that would receive those funds. We chose the Plainville Emergency Relief Fund. The fund was established some 30 years ago with a grant from the now defunct Plainville United Way and is dedicated to helping Plainville residents who find themselves in an emergency and have nowhere else to turn. The fund is governed by a board of directors who have the authority to make grants um, we've helped countless people over the years, and because of the money we received from Plain Ridge Park, we will continue that work for many years to come. I also work with Plainville's Living Bread Food Pantry, another recipient of the casino's generosity. The Plainville has received cash grants and has benefited from food drives sponsored by Plain Ridge Park. As the pressures of COVID grew, you can imagine the experience received an upt uptick in need. Currently, we serve 45 families weekly and are planning to distribute between 80 and 90 turkeys at Thanksgiving. Plain Ridge Park has always been, and I suspect will continue to be a loyal friend. Also, you've heard from various people about how important the, the the track is and the casino is into the Haas community, the farm community in Plainville. I don't think that can be overstated. And more importantly, I wanted to reiterate something again from a personal standpoint of a, of a resident of Plainville. Luke mentioned the large track of land that was purchased um, by with the host community fees, fees, we call it Hawkins Woods. In order to get to Hawkins Woods, you drive through the west part of town, through the open fields, the paddocks. The calming and restorative power that we see with those grazing horses, sunlight dancing on that beautiful grass as we go into those woods, it simply can't be overstated. The Plainville residents understand every time we're able to do, take that trip through that west side of town, not have it congested with, with subdivisions, just how lucky we are 
to partner with Plainville Park Casino. So these are just a few examples of how this, so the casino has supported our community in very quiet ways. They do not look for publicity, although they deserve to be acknowledged for their generosity. Let these comments be that acknowledgement. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Joe? Okay. Um, I guess what I wanted to do was give folks, uh, that, that, that wraps up our list of, of speakers. But first, I wanted to give anyone, if there's anyone that registered for this that we missed, um, if you wanted to speak at this point. I, I see Mr. Corey raising his hand, Joe. Do you see Mr. Corey? Martin. Hi, Madam Chair. Yes. Good afternoon. Go right ahead, Mr. Corey. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And I, I had uh, put in a request back in June uh, with regards to license renewals. So thank you very much for recognizing me. And I, I can't think of a better person to follow than Kathy Parker uh, in the lyrical way that she uh, expressed an open field with horses dancing in, in open space and, and the wonderful contribution that Plain Ridge Park Racetrack has made with the horse farms and, and the uh, ancillary businesses that have thrived since uh, harness horse racing has exploded at, at the track in Plainville. And I'm happy to say today that uh, we are withdrawing our request for the delay of the renewal of the license. It's license and I, I will, will not uh, repeat the things that other commentators have so eloquently said today. Senator Feeney, uh, ticking off the various statistics. Uh, uh, our partner, Steve O'Toole, going through the expansion of the breeding programs. Uh, Ray Campbell, uh, ditto. Um, we're, we're so happy with the intercession of the Gaming Commission uh, back in June, where there did not seem to be any, <clears throat> excuse me, any hope or likelihood of live racing um, starting up again at Plainville, with your help and, and guide, guidance, uh, getting live racing without spectators back up and running. And uh, one, one point that I think is important to note that folks involved in this industry spend anywhere from fifteen to $25,000 a year on uh, keeping a horse. So there, there's added financial pressure on the, the people who uh, love uh, harness racing and, and who have chosen to make their uh, living, livelihood not working behind a desk. And, and this is certainly an attraction that goes along hand in hand with the casino as uh, a place that people want to come to that no other uh, casino in Connecticut or in the surrounding area can have as a draw for patrons. So um, we're, we're very happy to have the seven year contract agreement in place with PNG. Um, I'm happy to, to, to be here today to say that we're, we're withdrawing our request for the delay in, in the renewal of the license and uh, we're very happy to have the collaborative working relationship as partners with the Gaming Commission and with uh, uh, PNG moving forward and uh, hope that uh, we can continue to race with COVID protocols safely at the track. And um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Mr. Corey, thank you. Uh, and thank you for clarifying your position today. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Um, any questions for uh, Mr. Corey in light of the fact that he had had that um, request, made that request to us earlier, commissioners? Any question for him? I think everybody looks all set. Excellent. Thank, thank, thank you, you Mr. Much. Corey. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Joe? Um, okay, again, I just, I guess we just want to find out if, if there's anyone out here that um, has not commented or didn't register and who might like to speak at this point. Just remember to unmute if you're on a phone. Um, star six. Oh, Chris Despre raised his hand is what I'm seeing. It's, 
Is that accurate? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and again, my apologies to anyone if we're somehow missing you. Hello, uh, good afternoon, Joe. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, weigh in. Um, I had recently run for uh, a position in town. Although unsuccessful, I was able to uh, speak to over 300 residents uh, in town. And one of my questions that I would ask in conversations was uh, what they thought about Plain Ridge. And not one negative response was given to me out of 300 residents. And although that might not seem like a big sample, to me, it spoke volumes of the positivity of uh, the residents here in Plainville about the casino and how much uh, we appreciate them as uh, neighbors and partners. And uh, that's all I really wanted to uh, give is the opportunity to maybe speak on behalf of the 300 people that I did meet while I was running. And thank you very much for the time. Commissioners, did you want to comment on Mr. Perez? Uh, I think that's a unique candidate. You, you've, you've come back after taking such care to get solicit information from your constituents. And even though you may not have won the race, you brought back your feedback to us. And so we thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, if, if anyone else wants to raise their hand or give a shout, Joe, and um, I appreciate any of my fellow commissioners looking to see if they see anyone trying to get our attention. We do have, at one point, we had, I think, 100 individuals. We have 73 now. And we may have had more. I'm not seeing any activity, Joe. No, I don't see anything. I keep scrolling back and forth at this point. Um, so I'm not saying anything, but I think what we can do is, um, you know, we need to leave this hearing open until six o'clock. I'm, I'm assuming I'll just stay planted right here in my chair, looking at the screen, seeing if anyone wants to opine. Um, and I think we did want to give uh, Lance George uh, just a sort of last bite at the apple. Uh, for any wrap up that he might have or anything. So yeah, I thought we would do that see. at the very end. Or... Yeah, let's just see if we have one more person. I, oh, okay, never mind. That was from Winterno, so sorry. Okay, Lance, I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies, Joe. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, yeah, I thought we, we had put on the schedule an opportunity for Lance if there was any rebuttal necessary or any wrap up necessary. So I think we can probably turn it over to him at this point and then I'll just stay on the line and you know everybody can kind of stand by and if we can maybe reconvene it, I don't know, 10 minutes of six or, or thereabouts. Right, if, if my fellow commissioners, if you could just, uh, um, you know, maybe block yourselves out and, and mute yourselves, but stay in the vicinity so we could give a shout. Um, I see Karen has joined us, so who will help. And, and I guess I would, I would really ask uh, Gaming Commission staff who don't need to be on the call, if everybody sort of jumps off of it, um, we'll see every, pretty much everybody who's sort of waiting, if that makes sense. Yeah, they, but not before we hear from... from no, no. <laughs> Lance. Sure. Um, not a lot after today. Today's testimony, I do worry, but I can only take it backwards. It was certainly encouraging to hear the good work that's been done. Um, I would tell you that this property and this company was and is keenly aware of what the expectations were from the legislature with the passage of the enabling legislation. Um, it's not lost on us. And, and I do hope that after today's testimony, you guys can see just how hard we work to hold up our end of the bargain. Um, it doesn't just happen. And so I guess that's my second uh, point I want to touch on. I do want to thank this team at this property for the tremendous work. I think as we went through this deck, we were short on just one goal. Um, tremendous work, tremendous work all around by, by this group. And then shifting gears a little bit, I do think certainly as I listen to the testimony, um, the magnitude of, of what it is 
that this has been able to accomplish, I guess the, this property has been able to accomplish. Certainly we recognize the financial benefits to the town, to the state, but you know, after hearing from so many folks today, it, it goes well beyond that. Um, it, and it's great to hear, I think day in and day out, that gets lost um, because you're doing your job. We're interacting with, with the commission, with our customers, with the employees, but to hear so many folks talk who are well outside of that group and the positive impact that this property has had, whether individually, as a nonprofit, as a town, um, it, it, it feels good. It, it certainly does. It, um, we, we have worked very hard. Um, couldn't be happier with how things unfolded today and the good words that we heard from so many folks. Thank, thank you, Lance. Thank you so much. Okay, so we will not formally conclude today's meeting or hearing. We will um, have um, Joe stand guide, guard, and I think Karen, to you intend to maybe uh, text any commissioner if they, if we hear from someone else, we invite the public if anyone is, is still listening to, 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 and they wanna get their comments together to come and, and bring those comments forward. We will stay, um, our meeting will stay open until six. And uh, at this point, I think on behalf of all my fellow commissioners, we just wish to thank everyone who did make an appearance and, and take the time to be so thoughtful and to contribute insights to um, really help us in our, in our process. So thank you. And, and to the entire um, PPC team, excellent presentation, very clear, very helpful. And we congratulate you on today's commentary. You should be very proud. Okay, um, so if you'll excuse us, I guess this is somewhat different, but yeah. we'll block ourselves out and, um, and we'll stay tuned uh, for about, we can be at 10 of six, please, unless we're invited to come back earlier for comments. And I will stand by. Okay, Joe, I'll stand by with you. So if, if anyone pops up, we can text or, or call each other and then we can circle back to grab the commissioners back onto the meeting. Yep, Okay. sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I, we have not heard from any other members of the interested public. Uh, none have appeared uh, since you folks uh, left. I guess we'll put out one more call and ask if there's anybody else who's on the phone or on uh, the video today, if they wanted to comment on the PPC relicensing. We have 35 people still on, <clears throat> um, which I am pleased with. And then we'll just remind folks that they would have to press star six, which seemed to work today for some people nicely. Yeah, we only have, a, it looks like a couple of folks on the phone at this point. Almost everybody yeah. else is, is uh, on video. Yeah, so that's good. I guess we'll just hang around for five more minutes and take a motion to close. Yeah. yeah. 58, Joe, and we've got all the commissioners. I'm not seeing Commissioner O'Brien yet. But, oh, I did something weird here. But we'll double check Joe on any interested party. Yeah, any last chance, I guess, here for comments? Well done to you and, and Mary, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. My watch is telling me to please, that I should stand up and breathe.
Gail, we were talking about the sunset. Are you able to see it out your window? I, I do have a window right here. Um, I, I think I missed the one you were talking about last night, though. I did not. Uh, yeah. I just I wondered in terms of your positioning in Plymouth and. Yes. Um, no, I, I can catch it from certain windows, but I, I didn't see it last night. So out the, out, out the, uh, the back of the house is where I can see it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. No go. I must have missed a good one, right? Yeah. Although, you know, what I'm hearing is it was maybe an influence of air pollution. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. Okay. So we're at six, and I think that that's the window we need to close by. Um, but I want to confirm with Joe that we're all set. I want to um, I send my and, and just before we close, that you know, appreciation to all who have stayed on, including so many members of PPC. So, Joe. I think we're all set. Uh, we put out a last call just a couple minutes ago. I've heard nothing back, so I think we're good to go. Lance, thank you so much to you and your team. And I, I suspect that we'll be reconvening with um, members of this, the same team and in in, we expect or we're anticipating a couple of weeks, correct, Joe? That is correct. All right, well, thank you. With that, I do need to have a motion to adjourn officially. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we uh, close the meeting and adjourn this session. Second. Thank you, Commissioners. Roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zunica. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes, 5-0 on the record. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you to all who participated today. If you're still here, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe.